I'm going to give you some tips here as to how to read one of these wordy recurrence relations questions and interpret it into an algebraic recurrence relation. I'm going to go through these two questions. One of them is AS level and one of them looks ahead to the sort of recurrence relations we actually do in the full A level. I'm going to use these tips that I have mentioned a lot of times before, so often that a student at some point made me this mug with them written on. They actually missed out this first tip, which is useful for A-level exams, so I've added it on. I'll go through these. We're going to ask ourselves, what chapter is it? What algebra can I write down? What do I need and what do I have? And what can I draw? This what chapter it is it is really useful in an A-level exam because it lets us figure out what techniques we're going to use. We know that these are recurrence relation questions though, but imagine you're in an exam and you decide from this question, it's important for you to realise, oh, I'm, I'm seeing some things that makes me, makes me spot that it's a recurrence relation question so that you know what sort of things you're going to be doing. Um, what algebra can I write down? I think that's possibly the most important here. Let's just get stuck into this first question. I'll make it a bit bigger. There we go, it's this question first. A certain number of people at a gathering shakes hands with everybody exactly once. HM be the number of handshakes that occur. So as knowing what chapter it is, we can immediately imagine what, this, what the solution is going to look like. It's going to be something like... Well, oh, they've written it in terms of a function here, but I'm going to use our normal recurrence relation notation. It's going to look like hn plus 1 is some number times hn, possibly with something added or subtracted onto the end there. That is what all of these A-level exams, though all of the questions in the AS-level exam look like. And we can write that down straight away. And now we've only got two values to find. What we've done there is what chapter is it and what algebra can I write down? How this is it, we know what we need in this case, but what can I draw? For some questions, that is about drawing a graph, drawing something mathematical. I think here, what actually helps me is just to like draw the setup. Uh, even, if it, even if you're like, drawing little stick figures shaking hands, it might help you if you're stuck, if you don't know a way in. Uh, we've got a certain number of people are gathering and each person shakes hands with everybody else at least what exactly once so let's draw n people we can't draw n people so maybe i'll draw five people there we go they're all sunburnt and they're all shaking hands with everybody else exactly once so They've, they've shaken hands, they have, they have, they have, they have, they have, they have, oh, it's a, it's a graph, it's a network. There we go. No, we're not actually interested in that, we're interested in this recurrence relation. So, how do we do that? We imagine, if this is n people, and another person arrives, how many more handshakes do we have? Well, we've already got all of the current handshakes, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five more. And in this case, five, n was five. So that is exactly how many people were there were before, so there's a one there, plus n handshakes. And that's it. That's it. I'm, I'm going to draw that out. I'm going to write that out again without those underlines. Hn plus n. And it's just that. So what's helped me there to get to the answer, and to sort of be convinced that that's the right answer, is knowing what the form of the answer is going to look like, 
and just doing some random sketch in order to convert these annoying words into something more easily imaginable. Let's go on to this one now. Have a read of it first and try and think why it's different and my, why this might be a, the second year content, the year 13 content, rather than just the year 12 content. Have a read of it. Okay. What chapter is it? It's Recurrence Relations. In the year two, we don't just deal with what are called first order recurrence relations, where it just looks back one step. We deal with second order recurrence relations so that each, uh, each well, what's the term? Each term um, relies not only on the one that comes before it, but the one that comes before that as well. But again, that's the, that's the only difference. I know from knowing what chapter it is that the solution's gonna look like this. And that really helps me narrow down what I'm gonna write down. Now let's interpret it. Maybe we'll draw a picture again, maybe we won't. At the beginning of every hour, each bacterium that lived in the previous hour, so that's just this one, divides into two new bacteria. So that's the previous hour, tw two new, ooh, if it's two new, oh no, it divides, it's two, each, each bacteria, whatever a bacteria looks like, blah, 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 divides into two. So we'll have twice as many as the hour before. Okay. That diagram actually, actually helped me a little bit. Um, all bacteria that have lived for two hours die. So all the ones that are two hours old are gonna be, are gonna get subtracted. So that's like negative one lots of that. I guess this term would be if we add any bacteria into uh, the whatever it is, the growth, but we're not saying we're adding anything, so that just goes away. That second bullet point is saying at the beginning of the first hour, the population was 100 bacteria, so that's telling us what B1 is. Fab. But that's it. And again, from knowing what the solution is going to look like, and having done a few of these, that wasn't too hard. I didn't know where I put the one there. I don't need the one there. It's just minus that. Try and apply those techniques, those tips, when doing it yourself, and hopefully it should help get your mind in order.